What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a quick review on my thoughts about having an Ubuntu based um, OS for smartphones. So I've been th reading and um, doing a little bit of updates to educate myself as far as um, having a smartphone that is not made by the big two companies, notably Android by Google and iOS by Apple. And I came across a bunch of articles as far as um, having an OS that's currently in the works by Ubuntu called Ubuntu Touch. So it's part of the basis as far as I can know um, from memory that it's the basis of like the Pine Phone OS and various other distributions that run an alternative OS aside from that's not based that's not made by Google or Apple. So I have my old OnePlus 5.3 or 5T here and I decided to give the uh, give it a shot to see about installing Ubuntu Touch on it to see how well it stacks up compared to from my point of view Google and Android because that's the operating system I use but to see how it holds up um, and generally for, compared to iOS just based on how well that's going. So because I don't have an iOS smartphone or iOS based device, I'm not really going to bring up too much comparison there, but think of this as a, re a review for a phone that doesn't run services from either company. So when you get to the lock screen, you do get a nice little um, setup here as far as current things that are going on. So this is relatively av this is basically after an initial setup process. So um, using the Ubuntu Touch installer for Linux, I was able to install it, the um, install the OS. Um, it does require a couple of backend things, notably enabling developer settings and getting a custom recovery set up so that the installer can do its work. So once you get that done, setting up the OS is actually pretty straightforward. There was only one hiccup where I gave an error, but hitting try again allowed it to proceed. And that's just because I guess in the reboot process, it had a little bit of a hang up. So you can either sw um, swipe left or right to unlock the phone and you get a nice little clean UI, much like you see here. Um, long pressing, or I guess there's not too much long pressing. So you can see that I'm not too familiar yet as far as what the interactions are but you get a nice little setup here as far as apps go so long pressing on the apps allow you to have um, access to unpin a shortcut or open the app or you can touch uh, open it directly in order to get access to that particular settings or that particular app so in this case settings is pretty straightforward as far as um, setting up the or go, interacting with things like sound and volume, vibrating on ring, uh, dial pad tones, and things like that. Um, the only thing that's kind of weird to me is that not having a back arrow kind of makes it a little, a little bit strange, but then there's also the idea that home and back buttons are not necessarily required because it relies on um, gesturing from the side of the um, screen to access your shortcuts and then also your app drawer. So I haven't installed any new apps aside from what you see here. So it does come with your base level apps like your calculator and calendar, camera, gallery, and things like that. Um, it does have a an app store called Open Store, but it's mostly based off of um, games and apps and things like that that are um, either apps or and if there's no app available, then it'll tell you that it's a web app. So for example, searching for um, Gmail, there's no actual um, app available for made by Google for Gmail, but you can install a web app or you can um, install an app like Ghost Cloud, I guess. Um, to access various other things. Um, so I can do a search, for example, for email to see if there's an email app. And I'm not seeing that there is one. So you could always install the uh, uh, the web app if you want direct access, or you can use the built-in web browser um, that's called the Morph Browser to um, visit your 
visit any website you want. The only issue that I have is that it's not necessarily a more modern browser. So for example, visiting Google Photos or sign trying to sign in with my Google account to connect it to um, this device did not work just because it says that it's an older browser. So searching in the App Store, for example, there are, I didn't see any other alternative browsers. So my initial thoughts are that this is not necessarily, um, an, um, it's not enough of a modern enough browser, but to work or to make it a daily driver. So, um, if you, there is this onion browser. So if you are okay with using an alternative browser, even this like demo browser, then that's okay. But this is one going to be one of those things that requires more testing. But if you search, for example, for uh, Firefox, then that's not available. Um, Chrome is most likely not going to be available, but doing a search for Chrome, there's nothing. And even searching for Chrome, Chromium, there's that's not available. So it's one of those things that it feels like having the an Ubuntu touch based alternative to Android and iOS is not really going to take off until either there's an easier way to replace your OS on Android um, that doesn't require unlocking your bootloader and replacing the OS or um, having more alternative means of installing apps. So unless they port, for example, the um, same store or the app store that they have on Ubuntu or Kubuntu or Linux Mint or anything like that, then basically if you don't have things like that where you can directly install those apps on a mobile device, then it's going to be hard for it to take off. So while the premise of Ubuntu Touch is a um, good idea it's not necessarily one that is going to take off very well um until things like that are progressed nicely so if there are so that is one of those things that is going to um require um researching to see if um like the, for example the pine phone or whatever other um linux based um smartphones are available that have um, better stores for better apps and th synchronization with existing clients like Gmail or iCloud potentially or anything like that, or even Hotmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever other clients you have, it's going to make it that much harder to for it to take off in my opinion. But the premise is actually pretty good. So um, that is one thing. And then other things like background syncing, like um, if you want a way to sync your um, passwords and usernames and things like that would make it hard, um, especially if you, for example, use Google Chrome to sync your bookmarks and history and all that. Same thing with Firefox sync. So while this is a good start, um, it will, for me, in my opinion, it's going to require having a more robust um, pack, um, app package installer or better, um, browser and alternatives that stay more up to date as far as having, um, support for various services. And the last thing is, is that, um, reading the, um, website for the OnePlus 5T and installing this on a third party device it does not support NFC as of yet. So that's also going to be one of those things where if you're unable to use um, mobile payment systems, then switching away from Android or iOS is going to be difficult if you do use mobile payment systems. Um, just because it is hard to, it would be hard to convince people to use um, another operating system if they can't use mobile payments, especially internationally where uh, mobile systems are a, little, a lot more robust than um, in the United States. So with that all being said, um, as far as a review and grade for Ubuntu Touch, I'd probably give it about an 80% just because it's good. Um, it seems well enough as far as a general mobile system, as far as if you're going to use it for basic photo sharing, um, text messaging and phone calls and things like that. But if you're going to expect to 
use um, services like let's say even um, if you're gonna if you want to use WhatsApp, it looks like you would have to use um, the WhatsApp uh, web app. Um, if you, it looks like you can, if same thing with Telegram to use a web app. So I guess that's okay, but it's going to be one of those things that it does require staying more up to date as far as more current, um, browsing, um, standards. So you can use services like, um, Google photos, which had an issue with signing in. Same thing with Gmail where it says, where they tell you to have a, use a more modern browser, but I think it, or based on the look of it, it um defaulted to the basic html website so that's kind of why i'm taking away points so overall it is a good um start to an alternative mo um, os but until it can become more robust or there's a better way to replace your phone's operating system like whether it's a google pixel and sticking speaking strictly from the um um, Android side of things. So let's say you are using it, whether it's a Google Pixel or a OnePlus device, um, Samsung or anything like that. So once a device falls out of um, favor or out of the update cycle and being able to easily install an alternative OS to make it last longer or being able to directly install it is going to be one of those things that will allow Ubuntu Touch to take off or potentially having a more robust um app environment so that you can easily convince people to switch so if you say that okay everything is going to be available on via a web app so rather than installing an app like you know of via google play or the ios app store if you just search for you know gmail and it creates the shortcuts that are needed um, same thing with like google photos or amazon photos on the amazon website and things like that then that will make it better but if the for me to start the browser does need to be updated and then being able to sign into your various services more easily needs to be updated for it to be a better OS. So that's all there is for that. Um, and the last thing I guess is as far as uh, podcast clients goes, um, I did do a quick search for um, podcasts. Um, I guess there is a podcast manager called Podbird, which I didn't play around with, but that's a more native app. Um, but there is the Pocket Cast web app, so that might be worth um, checking out um, as far as seeing if that's going to be a good way to use on a mobile version. Um, but the thing, it always goes back to if you do use a password manager, like let's say um, LastPass to see... so. Oh, I should spell it correctly, I guess, but um, there is the LastPass um, web app, um, or I guess the uh, one password, I think is the other one, but basically if you, I guess if there is a web app compatible service, then it would require you to start using services that are more cross-platform rather than, for example, the Google password service or whatever the iOS version is so that you can easily switch between devices and make things that much more portable. But um, so I guess in general, the Ubuntu Touch platform is a good idea, but unless it can be in, until operating systems can be replaced easily, which is outside of the vision of um the companies that are making the phone because they're making they're investing the time and energy to make those devices whether it's google or oneplus or samsung or huawei or xiaomi or anyone like that or and even apple no one wants to put in the work for hardware and be told to be able to replace it so um that's kind of why third-party mobile companies like the pine phone or whoever else is making an ubuntu touch based device um have the opportunity to take some market share um and especially and also build up on privacy um, by not using or not having those services integrated, but having the option to use those services because people will be using them, whether you're using, for example, like email, if you're using Gmail or um, Hotmail, if you're using Google Photos versus Amazon Photos, uh, Facebook versus Twitter versus whatever else is available as far as social networking goes. Um, and that's actually the one thing I didn't look at was um, 
like there is a web app for Facebook. Um, I'm guess I'm gonna assume that Twitter also has a web app, so um, there's that as well. And then and there is also TweetDeck if you want to use that. So that print the core base is there um but it does require more ease of access in order to make it a more robust operating system and then easier access to make it available um to more people and make sure make it one of those things that's easy to um learn over the existing um mobile operating systems that are out there so that's all there is for this particular post. So if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, um, want me to check out some more, play around with this a little bit more than what I showed, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, and all of that good stuff. And I am going to play with this a little bit more. I didn't set up and put my SIM card in here because it's not really set up for, or I'm not really there at the point to make it my daily driver as of yet. Um, but it's also going to be one of those things where, because it doesn't necessarily support, um, all the various things that I use at the moment, that it's hard to make it, to make that switch, especially for example, with, um, gaming, for example, via Google Stadia. Um, I don't, I would doubt that, um, it has support for things like the Kishi and things and that sort of thing. So it's probably worth playing around with or using as a separate local device for, you know, local music or podcasts and things like that as a media player, but that is about it. So that's all there is for this particular review. So you have the contact information, which will also be in the show notes, but if you have any other questions or want me to poke around in other areas, um, then feel free to let me know in the ways I mentioned. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.